Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Our Shane. So this week we're going to be exploring a concept and an idea, um, something I kind of want to just stir up in all of you um, around um, cosmic pauses. Um, recently um, I mentioned um, cosmic pause and I've had a few of you kind of write to me and say, what is, just what is a cosmic pause? Um, wonderful, we can explore that. Um, you know, let's start kind of with this approach. Nowadays, I think we all would agree, yeah, that life moves really quickly, it moves really, really fast. I often talk about, you know, the way spirit make contact now is different in so many ways, the fundamentals are the same, but there is a huge difference to how they would have made contact, say, 10 years ago. 10 years ago, predominantly, they would just kind of emanated their presence. You know, spirit contact can be so subtle, okay? So just a sense of, you know, many of you might have experienced it where you walk into a room and you just know you're not alone. Okay, there's contact absolutely being made. And then you get a feeling of it could be a particular person and you kind of shake your head and think, no, that's my imagination or it's my my want, my desire, my need, my longing. It's 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 made up, you know. And then as you kind of walk out the room, the feeling gets stronger or you just get a sense of as you walk through the doors, if you've walked past somebody, you know, a couple of things there is one, you weren't feeling it before. Two, it was as you walked into the room and as you've left the room, you know, things to consider. What I'm really saying here is that you're identifying something that's going on, something that's happening that's outside of yourself, okay? But it was so subtle, and that's how it was happening kind of 10 years ago. Spirit has said in the last few years that nowadays <coughs> people are moving so fast and they're moving so distracted. You know, you've only got to look at a Monday morning through every town, every city, no matter where that city is, no matter where that town is within the world, that most people at nine o'clock on a Monday morning, or better still, eight o'clock on a Monday morning, are trying to get somewhere, okay? And quite often, there's this sense of trying to get there first, you know? There's that kind of, kind of hurried, rushed kind of mentality. Um, and, I, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, that that's conscious, some of it may well be, but a lot of that is subconscious and it's this sense of movement, what spirit are talking about. Um, so therefore, it's a lot harder for them to kind of come through in the subtle ways that they used to. So now, direct contact, if you like, is happening in more profound ways, i.e. a presence standing in the doorway. Uh, a presence in a hallway, a presence at the top of the stairs, a presence at the end of the bed, um, a sense of smell coming through. Again, you can't imagine it, you're either smelling it or you're not. You know, so there's a feeling that they've kind of stepped up. They're having to kind of emanate that contact a lot louder. And in a way, what we call, it is we, the innate and I, what we call, um, direct physical contact it grabs your attention now I kind of believe a step on from that is a cosmic pause now for me a cosmic pause was stirred up through an experience I had with a gentleman and it kind of it just it just almost bubbled up 
you know it just percolated over a couple of years um so remember what i said everything's moving really really quickly everything's moving really really fast you know and people recently were talking about when a name you know you hear a name being called you know and for me if you hear your being your name being called you know as it come up in the video um i will put links within this video as well um as it come up in that video your name being called is absolutely designed to grab your attention you know and one of the questions that I would say is why? Why are they trying to grab your attention? Is it because they want you to know they're there? Are you grieving them? They want you to know that it's there. Absolutely, that can be the case in its kind of pure, raw form. Another aspect of that is what is it that you're missing? What is it in life that you're not paying attention to? Is there something that you should be paying attention to you know as i said to the lady in the end of the uh, recent video of i heard my name being called what does it mean um i then turned around and said to her what is the time the time will tell you everything if you can identify it to be somebody that you know in life and they've passed remember how they would mention your name how they would call your name you know, depending on the tone, what was the expression? What was it trying to tell you? You know, so if you've ever experienced your name being called, okay, what is that trying to tell you? What is the tone? What is the pitch? What is the speed? What is the emotion behind your name being called? Because within my experience, that's them trying to grab your attention, okay? I will put I put I put all the links um, into this video that I feel that are relevant, okay? Um, but I can guarantee you, what is it they're trying to kind of communicate to you? What is it in life that you're missing? Now, this is where the cosmic pause kind of bolts together, right? And it's from an experience I had. Um, I was out adventure cycling, um, was touring, um, literally in the middle of nowhere and there's this guy um replacing um an inner shoe um and there's a couple of come a couple of experiences that that kind of really tie into this for me um two experiences that really tie in lovely to this and um i stopped to see if he was okay and it's like yeah of course i've got all the tools i need i'm absolutely fine and I went, oh, you know, punches are right pain. And he looked at me and smiled. He said, but are they? And I looked at him and uh, kind of gestured if to say, how do you mean? And he said, you know, going back a few years ago, going back a few years ago, um, he had an experience where he was coming off the mountains, um, cycling off the mountains and he was picking up a larger trail. And the larger trail was still very, very remote, but it was taking him to... Um, crossing over a, a really busy highway, um, really, really, really busy kind of road highway, um, and he's cycling down, and he suddenly, as he picked up this larger trail, he got a puncher. He believed he repaired the puncher, pumped up the, the tire, uh, tube, it seemed fine, put it in the tire. As he'd done that, it went flat again thought that's funny i thought i'd located all the holes another hole repaired it put it back in same thing happened in the end he changed his tube but it took three times as long as it should do um and he was a little bit frustrated with that and felt kind of you know in a way exhausted got on his bike eventually pedaled out and then he got to the, the highway and, and the road was kind of just blocked off and they, he could hear the sirens and there was a, a lorry that had gone over and he went really cold and he said to himself, if I'd been any quicker, there's a possibility that I would have met all of that. And it kind of just kind of left, you know, left a kind of, a goosebump feeling with me it was kind of profound and from that moment on i kind of looked at it all very very differently um and i kind of thought to myself you know how often in life do we push you know we use force to try and get to where we need to get to and i'm not just on about in a physical sense 
on about an even and an emotional sense, you know, we're trying to push, use excessive force to kind of get to where we need to get to. And what happens then is we start to kind of move against the flow of life. You know, the flow is trying, potentially maybe trying to direct us here, you know, trying to direct us in a certain way, which is that intervention again of your name being called, you know, you're, you, you know, you're being guided or you're being nudged, you're being supported into a certain flow, into a direction. I think if we're honest with ourselves, we always know when we're going against the grain or we know when we're going against the flow of a situation or the situation is just not feeling right. And then what, what we do if we kind of go against that, we're going to be using force. So just not just physically, you know, beyond that. You know, emotionally, are we using force to try and get somewhere? You know, um, are we using force um, rather than flow? Okay. Um, and I think that's really, really, really important. You know, I, I'm, one of the things I talk about is, you know, in a way, kind of becoming a flow junkie where you're just kind of flowing and you can feel when you're dropped into that kind of flow state um, and everything is kind of flowing um and and kind of seeking that sense of flow um and you know that to me you know thereafter i kind of looked at that very very differently and thought to myself i you know it's important to kind of start noticing when when there is um a level of resistance or 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 there's something that's happening that in a way becomes a cosmic pause now what really kind of reinforced this for me um in its profoundest profoundest way i was talking to my dear wonderful granddad um and he had told me the story before but he had told me um the story um before he passed where he was talking to me about um as a woodsman um because he would travel um vast distances on his on his bike um before working in the wood work, working on the land um and then he would travel back and this one particular day he was um traveling and he he got this puncture it was during the war um and because he had um a problem with 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 his eyes um he was um working on the land you know he was very 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 skilled that way and that's where he was placed so he worked on the land um as a woodsman um and it was during the war time and he had this puncture and he pumped it back up and it went back down he pumped it back up and it was absolutely fine but just as he was about to set off Okay, just about, it was about to set off, there was a building in the distance, like a village hall that he was heading towards, and this doodle bug, and you, you, he said they made the most ghastly sound, this doodle bug kind of headed over the top of him, and then kind of crashed into this building, um, crashed into this building, and he said, if it weren't for that puncher, then I wouldn't be where I was, I would potentially be in that building you know cosmic pauses you know my nanny shared another amazing incredible kind of um story where um she was uh in a very kind of rural village during the war time very rural village and she was traveling up to the town next town up um to go to the picture house um and she was going to meet her friends so she walked to the end of her road where was the bus and um she was waiting for the bus and the bus never turned up okay the bus never turned up and she thought you know what i'm not going to make for the, make the wait for the next bus it was a wintry evening and she thought no i'm not going to wait for the next bus i'm going to wander back down home she wandered back down home only to find out that particular evening um there was an airstrike air raid um and the picture house got bombed and her friends were killed you know, I wouldn't be sitting here as I am right now if Nanny got on that bus. These things are quite profound. So, you know, for me, that's where this whole kind of idea 
of cosmic pauses come from and recently I shared it very loosely I was cycling back um, from a, a weekend adventure and I got literally a mile from home um, pulled around this corner um, there's this beautiful church there incredible beautiful church there um, and there's this wonderful little bench overlooking it um, and overlooking the kind of um, the woodland there it's just there's a lovely feel to it when we talk about ley lines the, this is all bang on top of a hill absolutely on top of a ley line it has a high energy it's a beautiful spot to go and sit as I kind of come around this corner tire was flat cosmic pause okay so I actually sat there for a while um, sat just kind of took in breathed in the kind of um, the space the environment where I was what I had done the shared time I spent with the most wonderful people and I took that cosmic pause um, before kind of changing the tube and then heading only only two miles at the most time um, very very close I was three miles at the most actually I think um, but you know cosmic pauses they're profound so you know what I'm really trying to kind of get across is that sometimes we have to just check in are we forcing or are we flowing are we forcing or are we flowing profound question to ask yourself hope you really really enjoyed that that gives you an insight um, of cosmic pauses and my perspective on them um, over the uh, years of kind of experience. I'm going to leave that with you. As always, guys, please keep your questions coming. Um, do enjoy our shame. Um, those of you that are watching this on Facebook, you can find a whole wealth of resources on our YouTube channel. Those of you that are watching this on YouTube, you can find um, a daily wisdom and a daily content on our Facebook page, which is Spirit Meets Adventure. All links are within this video. Cheers guys, bye bye, bye.